Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're going to be talking about basic canvas repairs. Sometimes you get a canvas that isn't quite perfect. Maybe it has a dent in it, um, or it's not tight enough to the stretcher bars, or you think the texture is too rough. You don't want that canvas texture showing through your paint. These are easy, quick fixes you can do with minimal tools. If something has pushed on the front or the back of a canvas, it can create a divot. Um, I didn't really have any with a divot, so I'm just gonna kind of create one a little bit by pushing hard on the front here. Um, so you can see there's an indentation, and I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna work on the back to fix that, and you can still kind of see it right here. I'm just gonna spray the backside lightly with some room temperature water. The goal is not to soak it completely, just to get it a little damp. And I like to run my hand over it to kind of spread any extra water out and to make sure it is all damp all over. Now, if your divot is on the edge behind these stretcher bars, you can just take a little sponge or a paper towel with a little bit of water and kind of wedge it underneath the stretcher bar just to get that area wet and then you can remove it and let it dry. Now I'm going to let it dry and when it's all dry, the divot should be gone. Now, this is the easiest fix for this problem, is just to spritz the back. It also will tighten up your canvas, so if it was just a little bit loose, that will help that problem. In fact, it's tightened this canvas up good and it sounds like a drum. Now, if that didn't work, you need to go to step two, which is using an iron and an ironing board. So to steam the canvas, I have my ironing board and it's clean, there's nothing that's gonna stick to the other side of the canvas. I have my canvas face down here on the ironing board and I have my iron, and this is set to a temperature which will give off some steam. Um, it's already hot, it has distilled water in it, so it's ready to go. Um, and if I hit that steam button I have on the back, you'll see that it gives off the steam. Um, so this is what I'm going to be using to steam the back of this canvas. Now, I don't wanna to touch the hot iron to the canvas because I don't want it to burn the paint or make it peel off or anything like that. What I want to do is use the steam clouds from the iron and just very carefully kind of go across the back without touching it. The hope of doing that is that the steam and the heat from the iron kind of help relax the fibers back into a natural flat position here on the canvas. The next problem is a loose canvas where it's not tight against the stretcher bars and it doesn't make a good drum noise. Um, so I find that this is more problematic with hand stretched canvases. If you're doing it yourself, you may not be pulling tight enough to make a nice tight drum of the canvas on the stretcher bar. Now my canvases are pre-gessoed, pre-stretched. I really don't have a problem with that. Um, every so often I get one that's a bit loose and the water trick um, that I used for the divot works really good for tightening a canvas like 99% of the time. If that doesn't work, you can buy stretcher keys. Um, sometimes these come with different canvases um, and you can buy them already cut like this or you can buy a piece of wood and cut it yourself, which is what I had to do. Um, so you're going to need eight of these and you're gonna flip the canvas over and work on the back. There's two things to note when you're looking at putting stretcher keys in your canvas. First, if the front of it, the painting side, has no gesso, it's a raw canvas, you wanna gesso it first. That's going to tighten the fibers and help that process. So do that first. The second thing is you need to look at the corners of your stretcher bars. These ones are stapled together so you can see that this is not going to work. When you hammer these keys into these corner joists, what happens is it's going to kind of push these two stretcher bars apart from each other and create a gap right there. These are stapled, so that's going to be impossible. But the idea is, is um, if your canvas was hand-built, you don't have these staples here, and these keys are gonna push these pieces apart to make the canvas tighter. So I'm gonna demonstrate it here on this canvas, but just know that if you have these staples here or if it's screwed down all the way, this isn't going to do anything for you. Um, but what you wanna do is you wanna take pieces of cardboard um, or something that you can shove right here to protect the canvas. You don't wanna accidentally hit that with your hammer when you're adding these stretcher keys. So I'm just gonna put these two here on the bottom. And I have my stretcher keys, all eight of them, and I'm gonna be putting them into the slots that are here on the corner. There's one for the top and one for the outside and each corner is the same. 
Now it doesn't really matter which way you put these keys into these slots. Um, I find the flatter, longer side works best instead of the angle. So I'm gonna keep that side towards the outside of the canvas on all corners. So it's the longer side towards the outside of the canvas. The best way to do this is on a flat, clean surface um, because otherwise your top ones are just gonna fall out and that way you can put cardboard in all four corners. Now, once you have everything in and all the cardboard here to protect everything, you're gonna take your hammer and just give light taps to all of your keys. These need to be very light taps. You can very quickly and very easily tap these too far in and ruin everything. So what I do is once I have everything in, I just give two light taps, two light taps um, on opposite sides, and then I'll go two light taps on the opposite sides over here. So I'll do top and bottom, and then left and right. And then if that's not enough, I'll do top and bottom again, and then left and right. Going back and forth, just doing very, very little light taps on each of the keys until I'm happy with how tight the canvas is on the bars. Now remember, you can always tap more on these keys, but you can't really take it back because you're probably gonna end up breaking something if you really try and drive these into the corners. If your canvas is really loose and you can't do the stretcher bar keys and the water trick didn't work, um, you can try returning the canvas. Um, if not, you can always use it as a demo piece or um, to test out different colors or different varnish or other things like that. The last basic fix changes the texture of the canvas. Sometimes with some brands, this is very, very textured and you can see all of the different fibers in the canvas. And sometimes that's what you want. And sometimes you want it to be a bit smoother. This is a lightly textured canvas and this is kind of how I normally like to paint, but I'm gonna make this smoother um, because sometimes you want them to be smoother. You're going to need some sandpaper for this and some gesso. Now I like to use a sanding sponge because it has a little bit more give to it. So when I go off the edges here and around the corner, I'm not pushing too hard. It has this extra give to it that won't kind of round these edges too much. Now when I'm sanding, I'm going to very, very lightly go over the entire surface. I'm not trying to sand the gesso completely away. I just wanna knock off all of the high peaks of it. So I'm gonna use my other hand to kind of lightly press against the canvas as I'm sanding so I can see where those rough places are, where I haven't sanded yet. So this is already feeling a lot smoother. And you can see um, on, this is the side I sanded with, it's just a little bit white from that gesso versus a new side. So I didn't sand very much away. You need to do this in small stages until it's where you want it to be. But now that that's all done, I'm gonna take a slightly damp towel and wipe all of this extra dust off the surface. Next, I can put a new layer of gesso on top. Think of it like sanding knocks off the peaks of the mountains and gessoing fills in the valleys. It's going to make it all the same layer eventually. So I'm just taking a foam brush and I'm going to take a very thin layer of gesso and apply it on top of my canvas. I want a very thin layer. I'm not going to fix everything in this one pass and I know that. So I'm just gonna go very slowly and try and do this one layer at a time. Once this dries, I'm gonna decide if I like it. If it still has too much texture, I'm going to sand lightly again, dust with the damp cloth, and then I'll gesso it again. I'm gonna keep repeating that, sand, dust, gesso, until I'm happy with the surface of the canvas and how smooth it's gotten. But like I said, I like a little bit of texture, so this is just where I want it to be. Now this step can get very dusty um, because of the dust generated from the sandpaper. So if you don't want that in your house or you're somewhere where that can't happen, go ahead and take this step outdoors. So those are just some basic repairs you can do to fix minor canvas problems. I hope this helped you get rid of any divots, tighten up your canvas, and change the surface texture. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment and I'll make sure I get back to you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes. And I'll see you again here for another Mal Makes video.